All right, so you're thinking about using that Valvoline Restore and Protect stuff in your high mileage car, right? Yeah. And you saw that Motor Oil Geek review, and you're wondering, is that is that the whole story? Mm -hmm. Well, we hear you. By the end of this deep dive, we're going to unpack his findings, you know? Yeah. Separate the hype from the facts. For sure. Arm you with the knowledge you need to make the best decision for your engine. Absolutely. So what's really interesting is that Motor Oil Geek kind of tapped into this desire we all have okay. to keep our cars running, especially our older cars, running smoothly for as long as possible. Right. And he put these Valvoline claims to the test using his wife's minivan with, get this, mm. 180,000 miles on it. 180,000 miles? Yeah. That's a lot of miles. That's a lot of miles. And that's where we get to the wow moment. Yes. Right? After just one oil change. That dipstick was spotless. Spotless. I mean, who wouldn't be impressed by that? You got to admit, it's impressive. It is impressive, but some folks in the comments, they were skeptical. Rightfully so. And rightfully so, because a clean dipstick, yeah, that's great. It looks good. It's good for the gram. But does it actually reflect what's going on on the inside? Yeah, that's the real question, isn't it? Like, we need to look beyond that, yeah. you know, beyond just the visuals and really dig into the data. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Motor Oil Geek, he used a bunch of different tools, yeah. like oil analysis, particle detection, to kind of get a more complete picture. Right. But, you know, even he admits that it takes three, maybe even four oil changes with this stuff to get a full, clean... Okay, so three or four oil changes. Yeah. That's that's a lot of oil changes, right? It is. Especially with this stuff being so expensive. Exactly. And how many people are really going to be that patient, right? They see that clean dipstick and they think, oh, I'm good. But it's not quite that simple. No, it's not. And that brings up another point. Every engine's different. Oh, absolutely. Motor Oil Geek, he was using his wife's minivan. And that's, you know, pretty common car. Yeah. But it's not the same as, say, a turbocharged engine or a hybrid. Right, right. So how much can we really generalize from his findings? You know, if I'm driving a pickup truck yeah. or a sports car, should I just take those results and assume it'll be the same for me? Right. Is it a green assault situation? I think it's definitely something to think about. Okay. To really, like, validate these claims from Valvoline. We need to see how this oil does across a wider range of engines yeah. and driving conditions, you know? What, what kinds of driving conditions? Well, like think about ethanol blended fuels. Those are, they're getting more and more common. Yeah, for sure. And they can be, they can be tough on engines. Yeah. So how does this, how does restore and protect hold up in those situations? We need more data. We need more information. Right. And, you know, we're talking about specialized oil here. Yeah. It's not cheap. No, it's not. So when is it actually worth it? That's the question, isn't it? When does the cost of this stuff actually make sense? Right. And that's where the whole like long-term effects thing comes in. Okay. Does it actually reduce wear and tear? Does it improve fuel efficiency? You know, Valvoline makes all these big claims, right. but do they actually hold up? So are we saying that clean dipstick might be a little misleading? It could be, and I think we got to be careful about not getting, you know, too excited about that initial wow factor. Right. We need to look at the big picture here, and Motor Oil Geek's review, it's a good starting point, Yeah. but there's there's definitely a lot more to uncover. Speaking of uncovering things, yeah. let's talk about that manganese test. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. That's where things got really interesting. Yeah. Motor Oil Geek showed how this Valvoline stuff cleaned out deposits in the piston ring grooves, mm. releasing trapped manganese. Right. So uh, can you walk us through that? What does all that even mean? Sure. So basically, these particle detectors, he called them, they're kind of like sensors okay. that can spot different types of metal particles in your oil. And manganese, it's a common additive in gasoline. And over time, it can build up, it can accumulate in engine deposits. Interesting. So what Motor Oil Geek showed was that this Valvoline oil, it was really good at breaking down those deposits okay. and releasing the manganese that was trapped in there. Okay, so it's like it's cleaning things up. Exactly. And he specifically pointed out the ring grooves, which are these like channels in your pistons uh, where the piston rings sit. Okay. And keeping those clean is super important for your engine to run well. So this is a good thing, right? It means the oil's doing its job, like it's actually cleaning the gunk out of there. On the surface, yeah, it seems like a good thing. Okay. But some people in the comments, they had concerns. What kind of concerns? Well, they were worried that like, all this aggressive cleaning, maybe it's a little too aggressive, you know? Okay. Like, what if dislodging all that debris actually causes more problems? Oh, like it could clog things up. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, what if it clogs up oil passages or even damages sensitive components in the engine? So it's like, it's cleaning, but is it cleaning too much? That's a really good question, and it's one that I think we need to explore further. Okay, so it's not as simple as clean is good. No, not necessarily, you know, while cleaning is important. Yeah. We have to think about the potential downsides, too. Right, like could this deep cleaning action actually create new problems down the line? Exactly. Hmm, that's a good point. It's all about finding that balance. Right, the balance between cleaning and not causing more harm than good. Exactly. Well, this is already getting really interesting. I know, right? And we've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to talk about, but we'll have to save that for part two of our deep dive. I can't wait. Stay tuned. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's kind of like when you've got a clogged grain, right? Yeah. You want to get rid of that blockage, uh -huh. but you don't want to damage the pipes in the process. Oh, that's a great analogy. So how do we figure out, like, you know, where that line is? Right. How do we balance the good, the cleaning, with the possible risks? I think that's where we need more research. Okay. Like, ideally, we would want to see some long-term studies okay. that really look at the effects of this stuff on different engine parts uh -huh. over a long period of time. Right. Like, does this aggressive cleaning, does it lead to problems down the road? Hmm. Does it actually make your engine last longer, like they say it will? Yeah, those are the questions, the, right? Those are the big questions. And it all comes back to... Like, is it worth the money? Exactly. You're paying a premium for this oil, so you'd expect to see some some pretty strong evidence that it works. Right. Like, if you're already using a good synthetic oil and taking care of your car, right? maybe you don't need this extra stuff. Maybe. But then again, if you've got an older car, high mileage, yeah, maybe it hasn't been as well maintained, right. then it might actually be worth it. So it really depends, right? On the car, the driver, yeah. all of that. Exactly. There's no magic answer that works for everyone. I guess that's why it's so important to, you know, do your homework. Absolutely. Don't just believe everything you see in a YouTube video. Or on the dipstick. That's really not on a dipstick. I got to look deeper, understand the science, and really think critically about the data. And that's what Motorola Geek, that's what he wants people to do. Yeah. He doesn't just tell you what to think. He gives you the tools to figure it out for yourself. Right. Exactly. Which is kind of what we're trying to do here. Exactly. But before we move on, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. Sure. The long-term effects. Yeah. We talked about the risks of, like, cleaning too much. Mm -hmm. But what about the good stuff? Right. What does the data say about how this oil affects things like engine wear, fuel efficiency, how long your engine lasts? Hmm. Well, that's where the data gets a little fuzzy. Okay. Motor Oil Geek's review, it's a good start. But it's only a snapshot. Yeah. It's just the short-term stuff. To really get the long-term picture, we need more studies. Right. Studies that look at what happens over thousands and thousands of miles. Okay. So what kind of data would we be looking for? What would tell us that this stuff actually works? Well, for one thing, we want to see how the oil holds up over multiple oil changes. So does that clean dipstick stay clean? Exactly. And does the manganese level stay consistent? Right. And then, of course, you want to look at engine wear. Is there less friction? Are there any signs of damage? Uh -huh. And fuel efficiency, does it actually improve your mileage like they claim? That's a big one. It is. I think this also highlights like the need for Valvoline to be more transparent. Yeah, I agree. Give us the data. You know, consumers deserve to have all the information they need to make informed decisions. Right. It's all about transparency. Exactly. The more transparent they are, the more people will trust them. Well said. But, you know, as we're talking about this, I keep thinking. Yeah. What if what if instead of just focusing on cleaning up the stuff that's already there, mm -hmm. we shift our perspective a bit? OK, I like where you're going with this. What if the real test is how well an oil prevents that buildup from happening in the first place. Oh, that's interesting. Like, it's not just about erasing the past. It's about protecting the future of your engine. That's a really good point. And that's something that Motor Oil Geek didn't really address in his review. Right. And it just shows that we need even more long-term data. Yes, definitely. We need to see how the oil performs after 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, even 15,000 miles. Wow, yeah. Does that dipstick stay clean? Did those particle counts stay low? That's the kind of information that would really tell us if this stuff lives up to the hype. Absolutely. But in the meantime, what can our listeners do to make the best decision for their cars? I guess we have to be like car detectives or something. Yeah. Gathering all the clues. You got it. Before we decide. And a good detective, they know that evidence can be anywhere. 
Ooh, okay. In this case, it might mean like really getting into the nitty gritty of how these engine deposits even form in the first place. Like what's happening at a molecular level. Right. And could this Valvoline stuff actually like interrupt that process? So we're not just cleaning up the mess. Mm. We're trying to stop it from happening again. Exactly. But how do we even figure that out? Like, what should we be looking for? Well, you got to start by understanding what's in the oil itself. Okay. Like, what kinds of detergents are they using? Are there any special additives that are supposed to prevent this buildup? And where do we find that information? It's usually buried in those technical data sheets. Oh, those things. Yeah. But it's worth digging into. So we got to do our research. A little research never hurt anyone. That's true. And, you know, we can always reach out to the companies themselves, right? Oh, absolutely. Like ask Valvoline directly. Yeah. Like, what's your testing like? Do you have any long term data? What's the science behind all these claims? It's all about being an informed consumer. Yeah. That's it. We have the power. You have the power. Don't be afraid to use it. And remember, the most expensive option isn't always the best. You got it. It all depends on your car, your driving. Yeah. All that stuff. It's about finding what works for you. Okay, so to sum all this up, yeah, it sounds like this Valvoline Restore and Protect, it might be a good thing for people with older cars, lots of miles. Could be. But like anything else, mm -hmm. we got to be a little skeptical, right? Always. And we always need more information. Always be curious. Right. Don't let a clean dipstick fool ya. Don't let it fool you. Do your research, figure out what your car needs, and don't be afraid to ask the tough questions. Ask those questions. Because at the end of the day... Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. When it comes to our car. When it comes to everything. That's what this deep dive is all about. That's right. Thanks for joining us. It's been fun. We'll see you next time. See you later.